Uh, my name is John Landers, and I'm the Assistant Director for IT Service Management within UTech, and I've also been chosen to be the host uh, for UTech Live. Uh, this is a special event that we'll do every couple months uh, with a rotating group of panelists, but I will probably be your partner and moderator for, for all of these. Uh, this is kind of our next iteration of Projects Live, taking advantage of the feedback and what we learned from Projects Live and, and trying to take this on the road to different parts of campus to really highlight uh, what we've been doing as an organization and really show the breadth of work that UTech is doing, whereas Projects Live got a little deeper into specific projects. This will kind of tie everything together on how we're impacting the mission of the university. It will be live streamed and we'll also have a live audience to kind of get that interaction because it's always great to have uh, that interaction with the audience. And really uh, for our agenda for today, we will introduce all of our esteemed uh, panelists and then we have a group of five or six questions uh, that we'll ask uh, that really tie into you know what are some of the opportunities for success we had, what are some recent successes we've had, what are some challenges, and, and how do we continue to move forward and serve the university. So thank you all for being here today, and uh, we'll do some questions at the end, but uh, no comments from the peanut gallery, from the fans, please. So, so I will pass it on to uh, Mike Thomas uh, to introduce himself. Hi, everybody. Thank you, John. An honor to follow John Landers here in the rotation. <laughs> So I'm Mike Thomas. I'm the Assistant Director for Teaching and Learning Systems at the university. Um, many areas, but in a nutshell, uh, we can categorize them into our Teaching and Learning Technologies group, which is our um, learning management system, as well as our lecture capture system. Uh, and then on the Media Vision side, um, I'm responsible for our Media Vision production team, which is graciously here today with all their, their gear, uh, as well as our audiovisual department. Thank you, Mike. I'll pass, I'll pass it on to Martin. <laughs> to introduce himself. Uh, I'm Martin Hines. I'm the Enterprise Systems Cloud Services Leader here in UTech. Uh, my team handles a big portion of the infrastructure outside the network, so that's the storage, uh, the enterprise backup, uh, the database servers, as well as the virtualization platforms. Thank you, Martin. I'll pass it on to Mike. Hi, my name is Mike Worf. I'm the Assistant Director for Research, Computing, and Cyber Infrastructure. Blah, blah. That's a lot of words. <laughs> um, anyway, my um, team, mainly deals with faculty research. Um, we run a couple services. Um, the biggest ones are high performance computing cluster as well as um, different services across campus that um, faculty use for um, secure computing. I'm Erin uh, Fogarty from the Information Security Office. Thrilled to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. And I come from a team that used to be about two to two and a half people, has now multiplied to nearly eight, and we're going to grow from there. Uh, great team. Separated into two, we have a tech ops team and a governance risk and compliance team. Okay, thank you all, and thank you for being here today. So before we get started on our, our questions, you know, UTech Live is really an opportunity to, to show how, the value that we're providing to the university, whether it be through keeping the university safe or through new projects we're doing that may impact teaching, research, or the business of the university. Uh, we have a diverse group of panelists, so it's not only going to be talking about projects in their area, but projects where we innovate and collaborate across all of UTEC and with our partners in the university. And really, as part of our strategic plan, how are we delivering excellent services to the university and trying to be transparent in our message and show that we are working together with students, faculty, and staff, and also our own teams uh, within UTEC. So this first question uh, will go to everyone, and we'll start with Mike. What do, can you talk a little bit about what your, uh, the teaching and learning technology area um, does to consistently focus on, on positively serving the university? Oh, absolutely. And I'm going to also include the Media Vision team, otherwise I'll turn my mic down. Um, so, you know, John, it's all about a continued um, development of the quality education experience here at the university. And whether, whether we're talking our classroom, uh, our classroom design and support, or we're talking, our, our, again, their learning management systems or the work being done with online, you know, it's really all about how do we meet the needs of the faculty and, and what they need and helping them understand what they need. Um, in, in the classroom space, a, a very important part is not only the design but the support of those spaces. Um, how, do we, how do we get out there, mitigate a problem efficiently and, and, and take care of it? I mean, let's face it, nobody likes to call for help. I will do anything I can in my personal life not to call for help. So let alone in front of a bunch of students, how do we, how do we get a technician there as fast as possible? Um, you know, the, the TLT team, um, they focus on a very custom, personal support type service. You know, whether you're calling and talking to Katie or Lauren or Genevieve, you know, you're going to get a personal 
uh, uh, response and something that, that is efficient and, and, and really of tremendous quality. Um, and then back to the Media Vision team, you know, they're, they're under my purview as well. Um, they, they do events like this, a lot of their work goes kind of kind of behind the behind the curtain. Um, but they're here even this week when, when we're setting up for the annual commencement, um, which is really, and the guys will attest to this, it's the Super Bowl of, of our year. So um, if anything's got to go right for us in the course of 12 months, it's got to be got to be this week. So, well, thank you, Mike. I think it really ties together all the things that the teaching and learning area does to to support the university and, and make sure that things are going smoothly. So uh, same question to you, Martin. Can you talk a little bit about what your area does to, to positively serve the, the university community? Well, my area, kind of like how I was talking about a little bit earlier, we're, we're part of the foundation of the university. So we have a lot of the underlying pieces that manage all the services that serve the staff, faculty, and the students. So we're, we're kind of another group that's kind of like the, the people behind the curtain, as I would kind of say. So um, uh, we've, we've been putting in different services, whether it's replacing or upgrading our storage environment to, to give the, the university and the applications the ability to have more robust systems to, to run on. Um, so we kind of try to like to help um, everyone across the university by, by strengthening the foundation and uh, also working with the teaching and learning and also the research area as well. Right. And really having the, that's one of the key tenets of our strategic plan is really addressing the, the infrastructure on campus, whether it be part of the network or be part of storage. So, so that ties very directly to some key action items in our strategic plan. Mike, could you talk a little bit from the research computing end? I, I definitely think one of the tenets that we have is customer experience. We always try to do the right thing for, for our end users. Um, a good example of that is our customer service. So a lot of the times we get drawn in on problems such as I want to be able to do this particular thing within the research area. For example, do an analysis utilizing GPUs or um, big data sort of data sets. Um, so we try to make ourselves available as much as we can through um, either email, having office hours, or even going out and visiting um, faculty's research labs to be able to understand what their needs are and then be able to provide them a solution that makes sense for them. Okay, thank you, Mike. Aaron? In information security, we seek to uh, protect the confidentiality, the integrity, and the availability of all of the data on campus, whether for faculty, staff, employees, or researchers. And in order to do so, we create what's considered a heat map. And we do that by identifying high value assets on campus. So we take a look at all the data we have on campus and categorize it into restricted or internal use only or public. And then when we identify the restricted data, we want to ensure that the appropriate security controls are in place, whether it's protecting a server or educating the user about how best to protect their data. Um, we escalate this once we identify high value assets to a point where we create a risk assessment. We've, we're doing that now for each one of the schools. So in essence, we trickle down um, how to protect the user by targeting high value assets and categorizing and appropriately protecting. Thank you all uh, for your answers to, to that question. You know, I think one of the, the things that we'll all probably highlight throughout this also is just the, and you heard it a little bit in their answers, is, is the importance of relationships, of building those connections across campus to, to know what um, students, faculty, or, or staff may want and, and have that trust and that ability to, to make sure what they need goes smoothly. So. Um, the second question is kind of a, a two-part question, and it will also go to, to everyone, uh, is that can each of you talk a little bit about uh, major projects uh, that are being implemented in, in your area that support, support the strategic plan, but also kind of tie that to how does that positively impact the, the students, faculty, and staff on campus? So, and then um, to switch up the order a little bit, Martin, could you go first? Sure. So one of the, the large initiatives my team is involved in is the centralization effort. Um, so that was kind of driven by a uh, security audit that was done on campus that kind of opened up and kind of made us aware of some vulnerabilities. So one of the things we've been doing is reaching out to the different areas and finding out servers um, that were either in small closets or under desks and kind of bringing those into the data center to kind of give them a more secure location. And we've also been working with the different areas to find out, you know, if they, if they have some issues with some of their machines or maybe run on older equipment, we've, we've offered up a uh, virtualization option for them where they won't have the worry about having to think about, hey, how do I replace this hardware later on down the line where I may not have the funds for it or uh, something may be going on with it that's uh, a hardware issue. So that's one of the main things we've been doing that's been helping out uh, a lot of the faculty and staff on campus 
and making their lives a little bit easier so they can kind of focus on what they're really here to focus on, whether that be teaching, learning, or, or research. Can you dig a little deeper on, you know, you talked about it having a positive impact on, on faculty and staff so that maybe they didn't have to spend so much time managing a server. How does that kind of exactly help them? How does that save them time? Um, well, it, it really lets them, at least from like the, the faculty and research side, it lets them really focus on the, the work that they're here at the university to do. They don't have to worry about the day-to-day -day operations of, hey, uh, is there something going on with my hardware? Is there something going on with, you know, something weird in the software? They have a, a team now they can reach out to to get assistance where they need, they need help in those areas. So things like patching, they wouldn't have to, to worry about. Right, whether right. it be software patching or hardware patching or something like that. So, okay. Mike, could I ask the same question? Yeah, so one of the larger projects that we have right now is within upgrades to our high-performance computing cluster system. Um, over the last couple of years, we've seen the emergence of what's known as artificial intelligence as well as um, natural language processing and um, machine learning, essentially. So we're right now in the process of upgrading a lot of the different compute nodes within the cluster in order to take advantage of the new technologies, in order to enable researchers to be able to compute a lot faster than they do today. Are there any kind of um, you know, good examples of that, you know, any partnerships with faculty that you could kind of shed a little light on? Yeah, um, especially right now in the area of biomedical um, biomedical imaging, um, especially with like um, MRIs and stuff like that, we're seeing a lot of different research on the ability to take a image and then be able to analyze it to see if there's a cancer per, in a particular area. So it's really great to be able to do that because it's a lot more non-invasive for um, the patient in the medical um, centers. So um, these sorts of advantage, advances are caused by having this type of resource available on campus. Great, great, thank you, Mike. Uh, Aaron, could you talk a little bit about kind of what security's uh, working on in terms of major projects and how they kind of benefit the campus community? Sure, we're working on risk assessments throughout the uh, university. So we visited with various schools and put together uh, a series of questions where we tried to evaluate what kind of data each of the schools has, where that data is protected, and, and whether or not it's considered restricted or internal use. We evaluated whether or not uh, additional groups needed to be trained on specific um, security skills to keep their computers or their data safe. We're also doing working on vulnerability scanning, uh, two-factor authentication, um, and tracking clinical research. We're getting closer to the world of human subject resource research and where you protect that data. Thank you, Aaron. Mike, could you talk about from the, the teaching and learning technology? Uh, absolutely. I, I like going first, though. That was. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think, you know, we talk about student success as part of the uh, strategic plan. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention our, our Canvas implementation, because like, the people in the back row there might start booing. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's been a tremendous effort. It's affected uh, the entire teaching and learning technologies team. Uh, there's been a ton of collaboration. You mentioned relationships earlier. Uh, this has really been a, a wonderful project in watching the team forge relationships, whether it's with the medical school or MSAS or, or wherever. Um, it, it really has been tremendous, um, uh, and, I, and I think the Canvas having one solidified LMS is going to be a huge, huge win for, for all of us. Um, when we look at uh, facilitating uh, faculty innovation in our classroom spaces, um, I have to you know, tip my hat to, to the work uh, being done or that was done with our learning fellows, as well as the assessment, for instance, Eddie's doing um, around those spaces. Uh, you know, and like when I said my, when I first started, uh, when I introduced myself, it's, it's you know, coming up with, with the most effective way to give faculty um, what they need. And, and that, that's tremendous work all the way around. And I think right now we're at 400, 500 classes utilizing Canvas this, yeah. this semester, which yep. is and, um, a huge volume. Yep, so. and I think I'll throw a shameless plug. Tomorrow's our Canvas clinic, right, Genevieve? <laughs> right over here. As well as, and I believe uh, Katie will attest, uh, 103 days till implementation. So, <laughs> great, thank you all. Um, well, we all know on on Friday that there was this this global ransomware um, attack that really, you know, was was everywhere. Can could I ask Aaron from our information security team to to share a little bit about how how crew responded and kind of what what we've learned over the last couple of days? Well, Friday was a very interesting day, to, see the, to say the least. We heard from CNN, we heard from some of our uh, partners, um, collaborating partners in higher education. We um, found out about it here on campus, and quickly 
it actually became a very good example of how UTEC works together and very, very quickly does so. So in an organized fashion, once we got the information, our tech team redirected their efforts and started focusing on, all right, what is it? Where is it? What's involved in stopping it? What do we know? So they were reaching out to all of the resources externally to find out what, uh, what news was out there. We did establish that vulnerability scans needed to be done, and so we reached out to other teams to help to do that. Um, thanks to several other teams. Then we put together a communications uh, effort. Thank you, Melissa, very much for all your help. We need to get a communications to the campus to let them know what it looks like, what it is, and what to do to patch it as quickly as we could, and then follow up, um, follow up emails Saturday and Sunday. And uh, fortunately, a, a researcher figured out how to do a flip switch and make it stop, but we'll have to see if there'll be another iteration. And I would not want another iteration, but to work with the group on campus, the UTech partners that we worked with to get it resolved, great times. But we've been minimally impacted by WannaCry. And with, with all of these, I think we always use the, the previous example to really influence and, and evolve. And if there's any lessons learned, you know, how to always continually improve our response as well. So. Okay. Um, so one of the next questions I wanted to ask, and I was going to ask um, um, Aaron and uh, Mike this one. Could you talk a little bit about the challenge you face and how do you kind of work through those challenges and positively address them? So I'll use... I'll use, I'll use the, the challenge of capacity. I mean, we all have capacity issues, and as I heard someone say yesterday, if, if, if you have enough resources in your job, please raise your hand, and no one in the room raised their hand. So, so I think, and I'll, and I'll use the example, especially around um, our AV services on campus, because I have a lot of experience with that. Uh, centralization has allowed us to pool that team together uh, in a fashion where we're able to to schedule and help out where there, there may be gaps in coverage or, or gaps in, in equipment or, or, or whatnot. And, and I, you know, that, that is really, uh, that's a good success story. And I know I've, I've shared some of this with, with Sue and Lolita. Um, that team has really, really come light years ahead of where it used to be. It used to be very decentralized, very siloed. You know, you'd have your team uh, here. I won't, won't mention names. Teams here, team, teams here and here. And it really, they all, they all function independently, and we're working really hard as part of the centralization effort to make sure that's one big cohesive team. And, and you know, I really do think it's really helped with capacity, and there, there's numerous examples of, of kind of one-offs that, that it created wins. And I would think good data to kind of show quicker response to, to, to faculty questions or faculty challenges. Or well, yeah, you know, and even, even if you go back and look at the, uh, from a classroom support standpoint, um, you know, we use an, an external vendor to provide that support, but now with the centralization, that, that resource is leveraged across the whole enterprise. It's, it's no longer just in a UGen classroom or just, just here or there, so. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Aaron, could I ask the same question to you? Talk a little bit about challenges and then how does your team work on addressing them? One of the major challenge, challenges in information security is that we have to quickly adapt because the attack vectors change all the time and the forms of attack change all the time. And I'm sure no one has received any suspicious email here, but some people on campus have received what looks like a very funny email. And three years ago, they looked, it was quite obvious, and you would delete it, hopefully. But today, even yesterday, they're very, very convincing, and they're becoming very sophisticated because they're learning what the university looks like. Who are the leaders? What are their names? Who are their administrative assistants? And they'll send out emails that look absolutely genuine, asking potentially for a wire transfer. Or your account has to be fixed. Yesterday it was your affiliation count has to be updated. That looks very advanced, rectify now. So we have to adapt to this new environment where three years ago, universities weren't attended to necessarily by threats. But today they're becoming more advanced, more sophisticated, and phishing is just one example of that. We have to watch for hits, it hits daily uh, against our fi firewall and adjust very quickly um, with modern technology and uh, training and awareness certainly for uh, our community. I think one of the things we've seen in terms of services, um, especially around the service desk, on, on days where we get large phishing attempts, we'll probably see our ticket volume jump by almost 200 tickets, which is, is good that people are reporting that rather than, than clicking it. But it gives us a good w way to use the data to know which, which days have generated large volume because of events like that. In the trainings that we have, uh, you know, we'd rather have you send a, a "Is this a real?" a hundred times to us instead of clicking once and then having to have either minimal or maximum cleanup, which could be five minutes or take five hours. 
So yeah, I'm thrilled to hear that. <laughs> thrilled to hear <laughs> that your ticket numbers are up because of fishing. <laughs> Great. Thank you both. Uh, so we, we talked a little bit about challenges. I want to also make sure we highlight some success stories. Uh, Mike, uh, could I ask from the kind of the research computing end, could you talk a little bit about success stories that you know, focus on things like collaboration and innovation? Definitely. Um, so last year, we were awarded a National Science Foundation grant for a cyber infrastructure engineer. And this person is um, here on campus to basically look, like, look at end-to-end -end performance between faculties, labs, and external resources, such as um, the Genomic Data Commons, which is a National Institutes of Health um, initiative that basically gives you this large catalog of different um, data sets that you can then bring down and compute. So um, our cyber infrastructure engineer, um, Cindy Martin, has actually worked with a lot of different faculty members across campus in order to look at where their bottlenecks are on our campus network. She was actually um, recently in Dr. Um, French's um, lab, which he does mostly work within um, solar durability and lifetime extension center. Um, with working with Dr. French's lab, as well as our UTech, our UTech colleagues within networking services, they were able to figure out that there was a couple of pain points that enabled us to deliver 100 times performance on the way that he was able to transfer data between um, endpoints on campus and then to his external collaborators. Um, that took a lot of effort in building relationships with this lab, but it also proved valuable since he was able to get such a you know, gigantic performance improvement. Great. That's a great story to hear, and I think a really awesome kind of success story uh, to be able to share with the campus. Uh, Mike, could I ask from, from your point of view in the teaching and learning area? You know, I think, I, you know, I was talking to Stacy yesterday, and, and really the efforts around our Canvas implementation with, with David in the medical school, you know, there's no two ways about it. There's, there's challenges that, that they've been working through, and, and I think it's going to be a, a tremendous success story um, having everyone online uh, with the same LMS. Um, but there's an awful lot of work around there. There's actually really a couple. Um, uh, there's a lot of work with MSAS and, and creating an online model uh, that scales into the future. Um, that's that's going to be a, a huge impact at the university when it's all said and done. And then and then mostly, you know, there's there's a lot of instructional design work within the TLT group. Um, a lot of that a lot of that doesn't necessarily percolate to the top, but it's it's well received. Uh, it's it's really a tremendous effort and a, and a really quality quality product and experience that students are are getting from it. Okay, great. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Aaron, I want to make sure you know we don't. We also talk about success stories and, and security and how they tie with research. Obviously, uh, the secure research environment over the last 18 months or so has has had some great success. Could I ask either or both of you to kind of elaborate on that a little more? <laughs> Not a day goes by that I don't get to chit chat with um, Mike Worf and Brian Christian. It makes my day absolutely, and we work very closely with the Institute for Computational Biology uh, to um, maintain the secure research environment. And as I mentioned before, as we're doing risk assessments throughout the campus, we're finding very high value assets, restricted information, and, and the, we're educating the uh, faculty and researchers to say, you know, we have this great environment to move some of the data in. We really want you to do it. <laughs> because it's such sensitive data, we really want to see them uh, put it into any one of our secure servers or in the secure research environment. So it's been a really good collaboration with them. I've learned so much. and. Um, we have a new uh, staff member, Cal, who's assisting, too, with some of the technical uh, input related to the secure research environment. Do you want to add to that? Um, I have to think for a second. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Um, yeah, so the secure research environment is basically a private cloud where people can either utilize virtual desktops so they don't necessarily have to store their data on their laptops or desktops. So it really works very well for um, investigators that are working with human subject data that have names and have all these different high asset targets that people that you know, make use of phishing and all that stuff can pull and then they can use for, for bad things, essentially. So it's great that we have a resource. I, I think when we talk about um, things that we need to advertise more, um, that's always something that, that we have a challenge, but we also have an opportunity there, especially when it comes to building relationships and, and partnering with folks such as like the Institute for Computational Biology or the faculty members that are in SAS, for example, that 
as they do their research, they're also able to advertise the services that we have as well as promote the different things that, that UTech provides for the campus. And I know one of the things I think that surprised me when I was working on one of the earlier projects is that uh, we actually utilized our desk site support team to go out into some of those lab areas because since they do have sensitive data and could be connecting to the SRE to make sure that their at least local computers were also in a good spot prior to moving all their data open. Can I answer a comment on that? I want to thank the desk site support group because they did a great job about a year ago. We had a, a small department moving into the secure research environment and we had to secure each one of those desktops and desk sites stood up and said, okay, this is what we got to do. Let's get it done. And Hmm? I'll, pile, I'll pile on there as well. You know, uh, you know, in the in the in the TEC space, one of the back when I way back in the day when I was running around doing a lot of this, one of the most difficult things were these PCs and all these classrooms. And really, you know, hats off to to Scott and Stan and the team. I mean, really, um, it's become now a really efficient model. Um, I, I watch the tickets and. Uh, Stan, I don't mean to jinx you, but they're, <laughs> they're few and far between at this point. You guys have just done a fantastic job. No two ways about it. Okay. Thank you all. Um, next question, uh, I'll start with Martin. Um, you know, could, you, could you talk a little bit of you know, why do you think the, the university audience and folks throughout the campus uh, should have confidence in, in UTEC and, and the strategies? You know, could you talk a little bit about that? Well, I think... UTech has done a lot over the past few years to really show our worth on the campus. I mean, we've been doing a lot with collaboration and building relationships um, to really show that we're not just a cost center for the university. We're not just a big black hole where cash just falls into and never comes back out. <laughs> um, I think from, I mean, just looking at the strategic plan, I mean, if you look in the strategic plan now as compared to the one we had a few years back, there's pieces in the strategic plan that speak to IT collaboration and, and UTEC and, and IT um, uh, just is just integrated all throughout the strategic plan, which is really amazing to see that. I mean, typically, you know, historically, you wouldn't have seen that at this university or any other university. So I, I think we've been doing a, a lot of uh, great things and, and really making a concerted effort to reach out to different people across the university to really build those relationships and, and, and kind of meet you where your needs are and kind of help you uh, achieve anything that you need done on campus and help out wherever we can. Um, Mike, Aaron, or Mike, yeah. either any yeah, of you want to yeah, add? This, this may be kind of cheesy, but you know, as most of you know, I've been here a long time. <laughs> Maybe an understatement, but... Um, and I think really, it's my personal opinion that in 30, 32 years here, sky that, yeah, sky is falling. <laughs> um, you know, that this is one of the most tremendous collections of professionals and dedicated people that I've ever been around. And I, I really believe that UTEC, uh, this is an all-star team. And, and I, you know, I talk to people at other institutions and, and this is a highly respected institution and a team. And I, and I, you know, the, UTech has built something special, and I, I really believe people people are going to want in. They're going to really want in on this team. And um, I, if I was a customer, I would trust this team with with anything. Thank you, Mike. I'll slip you the twenty dollars after the show. So. <laughs> it was only twenty. Yeah. <laughs> Mike or Aaron, anything you wanted to? Tell me only fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to weigh, and I would like to throw out there that. You know, the Board of Trustees has really helped by saying that security is a, a number one issue for them. And as a result, they've targeted UTEC, and UTEC has said, okay, we're here. We're present, and we'll do what we need to do. Um, and in that form, we've multiplied our um, employees. We have a really good, strong tech team. Uh, we've moved into more aggressively into governance, risk, and compliance. And we're reaching out to uh, other groups in UTech and building relationships. And Tom Sue likes to say, go out and get to know your neighborhood. We get to know our neighborhood in UTech. And I've had such a great opportunity over the past year and a half coming from another uh, higher ed university, very impressed with the, the expertise, the agility, and the creativity with uh, every person that I encounter here. I mean, a recent example of that was uh is, is watching uh, our executive support team and the media vision team work work in Adelbert to to tackle some some really challenging 
technical issues with, with the, the uh, meeting spaces there. Um, the, 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 the speed in which they came up with solutions and the way they'll implement them over the summer is another great example of something, frankly, we wouldn't have had you know, a year or two ago. It, it's, a, it's definitely a win. And I think we're, we're continually trying to, to improve our, our response and level of service. You know, for, you know, for so many folks on campus, that interaction is, is directly with the help desk. And, you know, whether it's, it's resolved at the desk or, or passed on to someone across the division, I think it's about trying to respond quickly and trying to, to make sure that the person is impacted to the least amount possible and, and can continue to be productive uh, for what they do. Mike, I want to make sure I give you an opportunity if there's anything you wanted to add. Yeah, definitely. Um, the first thing I thought of was our strategic plan. It's really kind of the embodiment of how we're trying to be transparent and we're trying to fit the needs of the university to what we're doing in regards to our IT roadmap. I, I think that it's, it's definitely um, something that we're all looking at how to kick off projects and also how to be more responsive, whether it's through the different services that we have or new services that we want to offer in the future. So, well, well, thank you, audience, uh, for being here today, and thank you to our Media Vision team, and obviously, a thank you very much to, to all of our uh, presenters and for your patience with us today for our, our first pilot of UTech Live. I believe uh, we'll be doing this again in, in August, uh, potentially around the orientation time frame, um, a very similar panel with similar questions. So this is a, a dry run for um, today. So more dates uh, will be upcoming and be announced in the future. But right now, I'll allow each of our panelists to just say a, a quick uh, goodbye. So you're not allowed to ask me a question. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know, this was great. And um, um, I had my reservations when Melissa asked me to do this. However, no, I think it's good. I think the format's good. I think, I think the, the flow of information's good. I think maybe a little less, little less rigid than we were with, with Projects Live. Yeah. And um, no, it was great. Thank you. Yeah, the same, same for me. I mean, this is a, a, a little bit more comfortable doing it this way. I, I kind of feel a little bit more relaxed. I, I kind of came into this kind of at the last minute. Um, Melissa kind of caught me in the hall and said, hey, you're doing this on Tuesday. <laughs> that never happens. Yeah, it never happens. Um, yeah, but I, th I think this is a better format and uh, a little bit easier to, to go through the process. I think so, too. Yeah, I definitely think this is an opportunity for us to really express what UTech's doing on campus and, and how, you know, this is a journey, it's not really a destination right now. And, and this is, especially if we're gonna be doing this multiple times, this provides an ability for one, for us to talk about a particular focus area like security or the projects that um, we'll be doing as, as time moves on. I like being able to put a face to our collaborations. We see it on email, we see it on telephone calls, but to put a face to what we're working on every day and say, you know, I don't go a day without seeing Mike War for <laughs> hearing Martin upstairs. <laughs> and, uh, More than 500 emails from me. Right? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. But really, thank you for the opportunity to discuss security. And Melissa, thank you so much to you and your team for putting all this together in Media Vision as well. Okay. Good time. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you to Melissa and the Media Vision team. Uh, this is all for our first edition of UTech Live. Uh, please uh, keep in touch for announcements about the next date. So thank you, and we're signing off. Thank you.